lifestyle's been freezing cold Like the diamonds in they chain, no lab grown stones Jimmy Boy and Ben Baller sit on the throne They never sold shit clone, get your ass on That bullshit is for the rodeo, it don't belong Blowing on that donut beat pack from the biggest bone From Cape Town to Ace Town, they hold it down Internationally respected, you see the crowns Dust brothers and theme kings, we all hustlers Been rolling like Jimmy Boy was feeding customers Cold as ice at the block, coming cop from us Well as podcasts in the world that can't fuck with us Lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, man, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we're setting the price This lifestyle we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we're setting the price, let's get it Yo, what up, what up, what up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Cold as Ice Coming to you straight, live and direct from Hollywood, <laughs> California <laughs> Via H-Town as well <laughs> Um, I am one of your hosts, Ben Baller, a.k.a. The Wash Lord, a.k.a. Back Nine Ben, a.k.a. The Korean John Daly. Got my counterpart on the other side. Yes, sir. Y'all know it's Jimmy the Jizent, a.k.a. Mr. Jimmy Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Uh, A-Leaf, uh, the hustler's choice himself. Y'all know what it is, live from the H-Town. Guys, <laughs> original theme song, Much Love, to Illegal Cartel. This show yes, is sir. produced by none other than the eight-time podcast producers of the year, the Dust Brothers. That's Miles and Dust Jordan. Dust Brothers. And guess what, guys? If you didn't fucking know what this show is about, I'm going to tell you what this show is about, okay? We are now eight <laughs> episodes in. This is not behind the baller, but we are giving free game. This show is to uplift Asian voices, Asian culture, Asian Americans that are doing their thing. But this is a universal game show you know what i'm saying i don't mean game show like family feud or some shit like that but i'm talking about the price is right there it is the price <laughs> is right though motherfucker Actually, it's, it's not right it's not right we're gonna give y'all the right price yeah you know what i mean the games to be sold not told but uh, but don't ever fold y'all know what it is man more importantly this show is a luxury lifestyle motivational show run by two idiots and yo man let's get started jimmy what's good man how you doing dog? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good, man. You know, how about you, bro? How you doing? You can see how I'm dressed right now. Obviously, I'm just, I just got home from uh, my dad's funeral. Not to, nah, to, to kill the mood and get into some, you know, some morbid shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. You know, no, how much, no, no matter how strong you are in your mind, no matter how much you try to fool, try to fool yourself. You could try to fool yourself. And you can, you know, occupy with mind, your mind with different things. The real shit gonna hit you, you know. No, for sure. I couldn't sleep last night. I haven't slept in, you know, shit a week. And um, this morning I woke up fucked up. You know, uh, it was a beautiful day. It was a sad day. But uh. You know, the minister, the, the service was done in Korean, probably 65% Korean, 35% English. And um, I, uh, I brought London and Ryder to the, um, to the funeral. I didn't think Kaya was, was, it was, was ready for it. She's too young. She's almost seven, but she's not ready to see an open casket. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, real quick, when was the first time you went to a funeral and seen an open casket? Bro, I can't remember, but I know I was little, but I can't remember. I, th I think it was at least when I was 10, though. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. R Ryder was okay. Mm -hmm. Ryder was all right, you know? Yep. And um, it's hard for kids these days. Both of them got somewhat ADD. Um, so with the ADD, it's, it's, it's tough for them to sit down. They, they took it like champions. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. London broke down. I think it was yeah. probably the hardest I ever seen him cry. He cried from the moment we walked into the funeral home um the mortuary right to the to the burial site uh he cried uh hours after and then uh, i dropped him off at uh at nicolette's and um he was fucked up and you know thank god he has a field trip tomorrow but um you know what i take from the day is uh no matter what you know the past i had i'm at a real solid place with I'm at peace, is what I'm saying with I am with my dad, right? I saw my brother, me and my brother ain't spoken in about three years. We was good. Strong hug. Um, my nephews are getting old, man. My, my, my nephews is 18, the other one's 16. They tall, they, they, they look like K-pop stars now. Shit is hilarious. Um, 
they playing you know games and stuff and everything. He caught up. It's good for for the cousins to catch up. Um, my yeah. nieces are graduating college. So, you know, shout out to uh, to Sydney and Zoe at Vassar and at Columbia. Congratulations. Two very, very, very prestigious schools in New York. And um, so they couldn't make it. They have finals. And, uh, you know, my sister, we A1. Um, it was kind of funny. My 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 um my son's ass, hey, where's mom at? Where's grandma at? And I was like, grandma ain't coming to this shit, man. <laughs> you know, my mom and dad ain't talked in 40 years, you know, um, yeah shit so it's, it's it's been some shit but other than that man you know um again it was a beautiful day i, I got to say uh my goodbyes and really it was more like good night you know he's already resting uh he lived the full life and um yeah man that that's that's how my day started but uh the week was good we'll, we'll get into more shit uh, how was your week bro no for sure my week was good bro you know what i mean and you know just everyday thing you know just taking care of the work and the kids and stuff like that but you know i realized like just thinking about life, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and thinking about things. And it's like, I, you know, we notice that a lot of people on social media, you know, they always like to bring up like wealth, success, um, being rich, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, the saying that we've always heard, like um, success isn't owned, it's rented and rent is due every day. But I feel like, you know, just like kind of like how you just said, like, you know, peace. I feel like peace is the same way, you know, happiness is the same way. It's never owned it's rented and rent is due every day. And, and I, I want to encourage everybody out there to, you know, remember to keep that peace, man. Once you're able to find that peace and find something that makes you happy, like work hard to keep that, you know what I mean? Cause at the end of the day, like I totally believe that success cause it like, won't come if you like aren't happy with what you're doing or how you live it. You know what I mean? Like true success, you know what I mean? And I don't not even like talking about financially. I feel like, like once again, like peace, you know what I mean? Like I feel like peace is the most expensive thing. I think it's priceless. Like that's something you just can't buy. You just gotta like eventually figure that out. And so that's what I deal with every day. You know what I mean? Like just making sure that every day, whatever I'm doing, I'm keeping that peace and that happiness, you know what I mean? To where I can just be sane and continue to, you know, do more and spend more time with my kids. You know what I mean? I was able to really spend the whole day with my son, Jimmy, um, two days ago, you know, I, I usually have somebody take him to jujitsu and I'll come like in the middle of his class and be there for him. But I was able to take him and just to see how much happier he was and how much he enjoyed it. Um, it reminds me, you know, what I'm doing and, 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 and I'm doing the right thing, you know, for my children. Yeah. You know, uh, the minister today, uh, my dad, uh, was in, of Christian faith and the minister today, he said something that, you know, we've all heard if you haven't heard it, then, you know, it's like you say, uh, you only live once. The saying is, is, is said over and over and over again, right? But no, that's not true. You only die once, right? You live every day. My, did, yep. my dad lived a long, hard, beautiful, great life. And uh, I think for my kids to hear it, hit different because I don't think I ever really talked to them about it. With what you said, I had a lot of reflecting while I was watching, you know, my dad going to the earth. You know, I think about every day, from about 2014, maybe even sooner than that, but 2014 until about last year, I thought every day, like, look, I'm good. You know, I just need to kind of keep, my number wasn't really a number that was that was hard to reach for me. And uh, I kept stacking and kept stacking. And I said, look, we got a nice little cushion. Hmm. And uh, last year I took the biggest L of my life. And it's still kind of going, right? And, and and I know it's there. The window ain't closing, but it's like, you know, I see the screen door now. And it's like, all right, I need to, I think the shades are down. You know what I mean? That's about it. And and um, the window's still there, right? I still feel the breeze. I just, when what I'm getting at is financially, you know, I've built a nice little nest, nest egg. And, um, you know, to lose M's, I think the biggest L I ever taken in my life was like six, 800K, you know? But I'm talking mm -hmm. like several, you know, many M's. And when you lose millions of dollars and I can just sit here and be like, shit, now I got to fucking, you know, now I got to, uh, you know, I do got to grind differently right now. My retirement plan or, or whatever I was thinking about before was like, shit. But the time I've spent with my kids in the last year, I spent more time with my kids in the last year than I could probably did, you know, two, three years. And I'm talking about the actual total time. I've, I've always been very present for my children. It's just what the one-on-one -on -one activities, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you take that kind of L. You know, and people, how many times am I going to say this? The parallels in golf, you know, in life, 
the game of golf. And that's why I want you to play so bad because you'll start understanding why you might want to get good or why, you know, or, or why it brings me so much peace. And, um, you know, that's the only thing I've been doing. And if you don't even fucking play golf, you probably never fuck. I'm never going to fucking see you. It's different with me and you. Right. But like, yeah. um, you're like the only fucking person, period. But I think about it, you know, the pain you feel, whether it be in love, whether it be in the work you make, you know, the, the, the job, the fucking a sport, a hobby, whatever it is. Right. If it doesn't hurt that bad when you're going through something, right, then you probably didn't invest that much time into it or that much hard work into it. You know what I'm saying? It's got to mean something to you. You feel me? Like it's really got to mean yeah. something to you. And that's why like, you know, I have such high expectations with everything that I do in life, everything that I approach, whether it be fatherhood, whether it be marriage, whether it be whatever the fuck it is, right? Friendships, but really, you know, with golf and everything, right? My expectations are so fucking high. And some people say, hey, you got no expectations. You got nothing to be, you know, you got nothing to be mad about. No, fuck that. I demand more out of life. You put in that work, you should get it. Some people say, oh, life ain't fair. I know that, bitch. But I put, I put, I make it hard on myself because that's how I rise up. My kids, I realize they're a lot different. You know, I asked my nephew today, he's 18. I was like, are you driving yet? He's like, no, nah, I don't want to drive. He's like, Uber's <laughs> here and there. And I'm like, yo, you a weird generation because I couldn't wait to get a fucking license, bro. I, I was 15 and a half getting a fucking permit. I was like, look, I'm going to figure out a way to get a car. But, you know, like, I want to drive. And my nieces, they don't want to drive. They live in fucking New York. They're about to move to Chicago. One is going to move to Chicago to go to med school. And she's like, I don't want to go to LA. I'm terrified of learning how to drive. In London, don't give a fuck. I'm like, Let what kind of car you want? And I look forward to the day. I look forward to four years from now getting my London a car, you know, and mm -hmm. taking Ryder to school and taking Kaya to school and whatever, but they ain't even tripping. Ryder, he a little different. You know, Ryder's been like, yo, dad, I think I want a Porsche. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, let's, let's get this work. But I do worry about, you know, um, their goals and things like that. I want them to be happy. But how the fuck, you know, um, life is hard. How do we not think about financial situations, right? I know you're at peace and whatever, and I know you took a big L recently. But yeah, I, I'd say it's the biggest L of my life too last year. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like before what I'm then, getting... it was like I, before that was like four hundred, and then you know that. So yeah, I'm just saying the cost of living today, bro. I went to the grocery store. Uh, I went to the grocery store yesterday. After the George Lopez tournament, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but my groceries came out to $441, bro. I don't think I went crazy. I just got what I needed to get for a couple of weeks, if, if not even that, really, right? And I'm thinking mm -hmm. back, I'm like, yo, five years ago, this was $125, maybe $140 at most. So, you know, and back yeah. in the day, that could have been like 70 or 80. I'm talking about when I'm, you know, I'm old. We got a little too heavy, I think, to start off the show, which is good. You know, we, we could lighten it up, man. I, what a. Uh, what you got on the, what you got on the plate, man? Show me some notes, man. Which what, what you what you want to talk about? Some music, some, some let's talk about something else. Man, you know uh Kendrick just dropped that disc, man. You check it out yet? Euphoria? Utopia. Is it you know Euphoria? You're right. Utopia. Utopia. Why the fuck did oh. I say Utopia? That was fucking Travis Scott, bro. Euphoria, right? Um, how about this, bro? I'm West Coast. Shout out to Top Dog. Shout out to my dog, two T's at TDE. Yeah. Shout out to Schoolboy. Shout out to motherfucking Ab Soul Scissor. The whole motherfucking crew. I'd rather let you talk first and I'll tell you what I think. What you think? He's spin, you know what I mean? He's spin some shit, bro. Like I like it. Like I I enjoy the art of um, you know, battle rap. That's how I look at it, you know. And uh, you know, I, I hope to hear, you know, Drake come back and forth and, and see where it goes. You know what I mean? It's just it's enjoyable to see, you know what I mean? Bars. Bars is back. <laughs> so you so who you think run who do you think won round one? Between Drake and Kendrick. Man. I'm going to let you answer that. It, 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 it's, I come for me, from it's, the like, it's, it's like different categories. You know what I mean? So I got I got 10 years on you or 11 years on you. What do I got on you, Jimmy? What year were you born? 10. 82. Okay, so I got 10 years on you. All right. I came from the boom bap era, fam. I came from the golden era hip hop. Mm -hmm. I love a motherfucking lyricist from Rock Cam to Nas all the way through. And motherfuckers forget how good Ice Cube Q was with the pen. We talking about battle rap. Kendrick has been praised forever. I'll be honest with you. I have never been an enormous fan of Kendrick. I respected what he did, and great that he has a lane, and great. That don't mean that he's not dope. You got to understand that. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean he's not dope. Me personally, I don't mm -hmm. even like. I don't really like Kendrick's voice. 
to be real with you. That's just my personality. Like, think, I don't like Eminem's voice either, though. And he was my yeah. artist on Aftermath, right? I don't love Kendrick's voice. Tell you the truth of, on, on uh, Euphoria, I, I didn't like the beat. And mm -hmm. I thought that the, the, the track overall was, he was spinning some lyricist shit, right? But the, the, the track overall, did, did, it didn't hit me. It didn't touch me. It, it was, it was I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I guess a six, maybe a 6.5 out of 10, you know? Like, I want to hear disrespect to the utmost. You know, I want to hear, I fucked your dead mom and got her pregnant you know, some crazy shit. I want to hit him. I want hit him up. I want no Vaseline. But the thing about hit him up and no Vaseline, why did those two tracks hit so hard? Why are those considered? I put those above ether. Okay. Why did For those sure. hit so hard? Why did they hit so hard? Okay. Why did they hit so hard, Jimmy? Because I felt like it was personal. But besides personal, why did they hit so hard? It was raw. That shit was raw, bro. Besides you know that, I mean? Jimmy, like, what else was it? it? You tell me. I, I don't, it was I don't real, know. dog. It was the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not going to hit as hard if it's not the truth. And like, there's certain things. I don't know everything about fucking Drake, but I know Drake. You know what I'm saying? I know whatever. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. There's certain things. You know, if you attack someone's, you know, height, whatever, boom, here and there, that's cool. But I don't know, man. You know, Drake, I feel like, has been the master of being a chameleon. I think he dove has definitely has a core personality. Right, his mom's Jewish. He grew up Jewish. He had a bar mitzvah and all that. And I know everything about that because I grew up around nothing but blacks and Jews. But then his dad is from fucking Memphis, Tennessee. He a real deep country black man, you know. So he has yeah. that part of him too. He wrote so he from has, Marvin Gaye, Al yeah. Green. You know what I mean? So, so but what I'm wrong. saying is like, you know, Drake has. He could be a Gemini. He's got two different things, like Big Boy from fucking Outcast. So it's like motherfuckers want to go attack this, this, and this. I'm like, all right, cool. But that shit, to me, it's like, I, I don't know, bro. I, I, I wasn't really, again, man. I wasn't moved by it. What was the, uh, the, uh, the Rodney O. Joe Cooley beat? The, uh, the, the, um, the, the fucking Metro Boomin track. Well, what the fuck? We don't trust you. What was the track called? Like that. Like that. I, I like this shit mm -hmm. because, again, you have to understand, a lot of people didn't know that was Rodney O. Joe Cooley beat. I don't think you understand. That's, these motherfuckers are from Los Angeles. They're DJ yeah. from San Jose. They are fucking from L.A., dog. That is OG L.A. hip-hop. Dog, they did a hit song that was called Fuck New York, okay? They had, man, they were, I just saw, I saw Rodney on it that long ago, a couple years ago, after the pandemic. I seen Rodney O. at the Topanga Mall, right? Bro, I could recite still to this day that Everlasting Bass, you know what I mean? And like um, mm -hmm. all the tracks, I could, re I could recite all them rhymes because that was real L.A. gangster shit, you know? But yeah. anyways, going on, I'll fuck with that track a little bit of here and there, you know, I say the things. And look, man, I, I need some... I don't know, bro. I can't wait. I can't wait for the, 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 the comeback. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I mean? Like, like that's why I said like overall, you know what I mean? Like, if I think about it, like the 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 Drake records are are more, you know what I'm saying. I feel more, but uh, I'm Look, just excited to see what comes out of it. You know what I'm saying. If you go on off of lyricism and this and that and whatever, and I refuse to let anybody tell me that Drake not a lyricist. I just refuse to let you. I I, I just won't oh, let no, it happen. For sure. I won't let it happen, dog. I'm the one twice over on the new eleven, bro. I seen him right. I've seen it. I guarantee Kendrick had somebody who wrote something here and there and everyone, it's just what it is. He's a fucking writer. They're trying to take after anything because you're so fucking big. If we go on a popularity contest, it's not a contest, bro. Drake's just too exactly. fucking big. Okay, if we go on yeah. off lyrics here and there, okay, then Kendrick has his audience for whatever it is and that's great. I'm asking you, who do you think got this round? I'll say Drake got this round. Okay, and there it is. Look, me personally, I want to ask you something, man. I've never, and this is for everyone, all y'all listening. I have never in my life been one to throw subliminals. Okay? If I don't fuck with you, you are going to know. I am going to let it be known and I'm going to address it. I will address it to your face. I will address it behind your back. I will address it to your friends. I will address it to my friends. I will address it. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of more than three or four people that I actually hate in life. I have valid reasons for it. Some of them die out. Sometimes I forget what I'm saying. Like, you're going to fucking know. If I don't fuck with you, that's like a different thing too. I could be like, ah, nah, I ain't fucking with this dude. For whatever beliefs he might have, maybe whatever, how he treats people, this and that, all right, cool. Hating you, different thing, okay? There's a far line between those two things. Hating somebody and not fucking with them, you know? And if yeah. I don't like you, 
That's a whole nother thing too. There, there's, a, there's a far li- far line between those two as well. So I think sometimes people are like, oh, he unfollowed me. Does he not like me here? No, no, dog. I would let you know. <laughs> There's probably some stupid reason why I did. For real. You know, when I went through the divorce, I unfollowed every single person except my son's account. Then I slowly came back and I'll find people. But some people are like, damn, you know, maybe been this or that. I just like, what kind of common sense? Like, did you give me a reason to not fuck with you? And in a way, maybe you snitched on yourself. If you're like, yo, man. Exactly. What's bad mad at? I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not mad at you. But yeah. ask me, is everything cool? Everything's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I don't like you, bro, I will straight up, like the whole David Chang, I don't like him, and I don't fuck with him. So he's two out of three, right? Do I hate him? I I, I don't hate him, but like you know, it's like that's hate is a know, strong just, word. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. I just never been one. I mean, what about you, Jimmy? Are you one to like throw like you throw subliminals or not? Nah? nah, bro. And that's what's so crazy is that like with me, it's like I'm a type of person. If I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. It don't mean I hate you, or whatever. But it's just like. I just can't fake that funk, you know what I mean? Like, I can't be doing, like, how these dudes out here, bro, love you, this and that, all this dick riding. That's what dick riding is, you know what I mean? Like, you know when dudes be like, hey, man, I ain't trying to dick ride. I just want to give you a prop. So that's not dick riding. Dick riding is when y'all be doing all that extra shit y'all do when y'all know y'all really don't fuck with somebody, you know what I mean? Like, me... I don't care if you hold it on to my last breath. I always say this, man. You can have that shit, man. If I don't fuck with you, I just don't fuck with you, bro. And that don't mean that I'm real, you fake, whatever it is. It's just we ain't, we just don't align. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just yeah. what it is. And if I ever got to speak my mind, I will. But I'm not going to sit here and play this whole role of like we, we tight, we booty buddies, we know all that fake ass shit, man. That's why with me, like even everybody that I don't fuck with no more, I'm not going to talk crazy shit about them or do nothing anything i'm gonna say about you i'll say to your face man and that's just what it is and that ain't on being no hard shit it's just the truth like if if, if you could if you like if you don't like what i gotta say then that's something that you know you have to that's a personal problem you know what i mean because i don't go around just be hating like everybody that know me know me no i don't be beefing with people like that so if i don't fuck with somebody like if i don't like you it's a, it's a reason you know what i'm saying like people know that you know what <sighs> look man I realize I've reached a level of popularity to where people want to be next to me because of the status, right? But then you got people you actually know who might want to fuck with you because you can get them tickets to go see Bad Bunny, okay? Or go get them tickets to see Devin Haney, right? For your case, whatever it may be. It could be fucking a million yeah. people that whatever. John Mayer, I don't fucking know. People I'm close with, right? And then it's like someone as easy as like your kids. I need to get this out there straight, like... I want my kids to love their mom, okay? Whether, Definitely. whatever the fuck she's done to me, that's not on them. They want to deal with that later when they turn, when they're adults and shit, right? Like I'm dealing with some, I was talking to my boy yesterday about divorce and his kids don't fuck with him now and I just, I fucking feel terrible for him. And again, I don't know, uh, there's two sides to every story. I'm not going to go on mm-hmm. the three sides yet, but you know, it's like Ryder could be like, oh, I want to go with mom today. I'm like, all right, cool, go with mom, right? And then, uh, you know, he'll, he'll backtrack and be like, well, well, dad, does that mean that you're not going to buy me this? Or you're not going to take me here? Damn, I hate that you even thought like that. You know, and it's For like, real. it's like, I have to think like that sometimes. Like, all right, all of a sudden, dog, I got my golf tournament coming up. They know that some celebrities are going to be there or some cool people or just they want to come next to me. So you got people who are trying to be nice to other people, trying to do a favor and give something in return. And to tell you the truth, it's not that I, I like, you know, I don't care if you're going to gift me, you know, some food or whatever at a restaurant here and there. That's cool. I understand if it's genuine, it's like, hey man, look, I don't know, man, you just seem really fucking cool. I want to give this to you. Cool, whatever. And there's no intent. But if I see your intent already, like, oh, you know, a writer has been like, oh, well shit, I don't want dad to be mad at me because, you know, he might not get my Christmas or my birthday present, right? Or might not take me on a trip, you know? So, no, nah, man, you're my son. You the rare case, you know what I'm saying? You the exception. I'm going to do regardless and love you unconditionally. Oh, for sure. You know, but like when it comes to a friend, and a lot of my friends have said this. My relatives have told me a lot of people are fucking with them because they're tied to me. Have you had anybody ask you about me before? Be honest. Bro, like, and the crazy thing is like, that's the thing. Like, it's like people have this like whole like what's the word I'm looking for? Like people be having their own like idea of people, you know what I mean? And so like a lot of people, they'll look at me like they look at me like, yo, this motherfucker made it. Like they think I'm a billionaire. And if they think I'm a billionaire, they think you a motherfucking trillionaire, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, and that's the craziest part of it all. So like, 
these people be weird because they come up with their own thoughts and stuff and and their their own assumptions of who the fuck we are and then they try to attach themselves to it and they and, and the main thing they do is they want to come with this sob story shit like yeah bro i came up like you and i know your struggle man i i, I relate da, da, da. you don't relate bro you don't you know what i'm saying like Let's just be real. Like, yeah, we go through shit, bro. We go through bad shit, but there's no relating to that, bro. No, like, I understand that. I'm asking you a question, I ain't bro. Never, I'm going to tell you like this. I ain't never came up to no dude and be like, man, I relate to you, bro. I know what you went through. Nah, I'd be yeah. like, yo, much respect. You know, even with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I respect the hustle, you know what I mean? And, and I look at you, should I look at you as an older brother? So seeing you move and doing your thing, I just peep back and play my position like I always been and, and see you do your thing. And it strives me to want to do better. You know what I'm saying? Let me rewind. Let me give you an example. Nico. Nico is one of the mm -hmm. main dudes in OVO. Okay, Filipino cat, right? It's yeah. a lot of people that reach out to Nico and give him shit under false pretenses in my eyes. And he's cool. He's just a nice guy. He's a great guy. Great guy. And I think that they have this idea that they're going to get to meet Drake and get around Drake because they're cool with Nico. So they go that route. I call those opportunists, bro. Okay. And, and you and, know, before and, being an opportunist was one thing, but now the word opportunist is a bad thing. You know what I mean? Because they're not doing shit genuinely. they doing shit because they want to get closer to you, closer to a, me, th whatever a dude, it is, man. There's a dude I know, and you know because you've met him through me who has literally built his entire life. He's got to be 37 or 38 or I don't know, near 40. He's a fucking grown man now. I've known him since he was 18. This motherfucker done built almost his entire life off of knowing me. And I ain't talked to him in six years. And like, yep. he reached out to Nico. He ran out to you. He went out to all the H-Town boys. You know who I'm talking about. And this ain't a yeah. subliminal. It's just not even, I don't need to put his, bit, but do you, know, you get what I'm saying? I'm asking you. And you know, it's crazy that you bring that up because when I look at it now, it's like literally you put that person into position. Oh my God. You put him next to you and people seen him with you and they seen you talk about him and everything. So they automatically looked at you like, Oh, this guy is the, the guy. And and now that I think about it, I did the same thing in my situation by putting somebody too close to me and everybody assuming like, yo, for him to be that close to him in that position, he got to be a made dude or a good dude or the right dude and whatever, bro. And, you want to say funny? They going to ride they going to ride that tail till they die, you know what I'm saying? This is the they funny thing. They going to use that forever. He finessed his way into making a decent life for himself, right? Your situation a little bit more flagrant. Mm -hmm. I have no hate towards dude. I think it's corny that he hasn't actually been out there and said it and been like, yo, I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Ben. Like, real talk where he's at in his life, right? Now, backtracking, you didn't answer my question. Have you seen people trying to be cool to you or ask, you know, trying to be like genuinely, you know, not genuinely, but but like you see him approach you in a, in a funny way? Because they were trying to get next to me. I'm just asking you. I've actually never asked for you this sure. before. Okay. For sure. You know, so, that's for sure. You know what I mean? You know, that shit to me is 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 just funny style shit. Bro, I got a question for you, though. How do you feel about the word sorry? Like in general, like someone tries to apologize to you? Yeah, like just the word sorry when people try to apologize. Uh, you know what I mean? Just when they sit there and just use that word a lot. Or even just people that use the word period. You know... To me personally, is a good question. I'm glad we're doing this on camera. 90% of the time, the word sorry doesn't fix shit with me, right? In regard to me being wronged or disrespect, whatever the fuck it may be, saying sorry like, you know, like, oh, sorry, like they're getting up in a chair because we're sitting in you know, in a stadium at a Lakers game or a fucking Rockets game, right? And they bump into, okay, cool, whatever. But 90% of the time, that, that mean doesn't really mean anything, right? Sorry goes or, a long my way. My bad, my bad, yeah. my bad. Sorry goes a long way with people. Like my ex, like Nicolette, sorry went a long way with her. She's very vocal about that, right? I just felt like, you don't know me by now? You know me. The other day I asked her, I said, where the fuck you think I'm going right now? She knew, just off top. And we still talk almost every day, right? And I'm like, look, you know me. It's like, you should know. But she wants to hear it. And fine, I'll do that. But I'm saying to me, that shit don't, it, it just don't go, it, it don't hit with, it don't hit like people think it's going to hit, right? Sorry, like I don't. But then there's some people I know that they don't say sorry. They're just, they're never wrong and whatever. And I heard this, saw this funny meme the other day. And it's like, you know what? I got really lucky 
I don't have to worry about who's right or wrong, or wrong between our relationship, you know, because I found a girl who's never wrong. And it was funny, you know what I'm saying? It's the fucking truth. But like, I mean, how do you feel about the word, bro, since you asking? I mean, what, what, like, what does sorry mean to you? You know, like, I, I feel like it just depends on how genuine, you know, this, like, it, I always, I definitely always feel like everything depends on the situation. Um, and, and, and the word sorry, it depends on, you know, the situation and, and how genuine the person could be, you know what I'm saying? But, um, definitely sorry don't fix nothing. And, um, you know, I do believe in like, I can forgive, but I'll never forget. So, you know, in we life, it's just like, that. yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying like, sorry is, you know, I, I feel like people don't say that word enough. Now everybody's just like, yo, my bad, yo, my bad, whatever, you know what I mean? But I guess, like I said, it's just, it depends on how genuine it is coming from the person and the situation, you know, because there's some things you can't just say sorry. It, it, it's not going, that don't mean shit. I got a question for you then. Yeah. I see so many times, you ever seen the meme or the video on Reels or in TikTok and like a guy's eating and then a girl reaches over to grab food and then the person grabs mm -hmm. their phone, whether it be a girl or a guy, and they grab their phone, thinking mm -hmm. the guys will grab the phone and people are like, oh my gosh, she's for the streets or he's for the streets or whatever. Oh yeah, I, and saw, it's like, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. and then now they do it reverse where like the guy's reaching for the phone, whatever, or whatever, and then the girl grabs her food. She goes, no, don't take my food and try to be funny. And it's just like, I get it. And to be real, I'm not dumb. I'm fucking very, very coherent with, and, and, and my spatial awareness, my, the spectrum of my awareness is so vast that I know it's a sad thing because 95% of the people are really like that when it comes to their phone. Now, I have some personal shit on the phone, and that's really business banking shit, secrets of mm -hmm. financial shit, or whatever it may be. Not really, but yeah. like, I don't know, business, like talking, right? Strategy. As far as like me sliding and, you know, into girls' DMs or whatever the fuck it may be, whatever, like, like, bruh, how do you feel about going through someone's phone? Like, is what, what, what's, what's your thoughts on, on like going through your girl's phone or letting her go through your phone? I'm just curious because I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed sometimes by the 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 energy that people put into it. I'm gonna be real with you. The last time I went through anything of any girls was probably like in 2011, and I just so happened because my ex um, logged into Facebook on my computer, and I when I went to Facebook, I was it was already still logged in, and something just told me to check. And with that being said, like um. I learned this from experience in life, you know, like if you looking for something, you going to find it. And and what I say by that is that if you looking for negativity, you'll find negative out of anything you looking at and you can find good out of anything you look at. So like as far as like how I feel about people going through phones like to each their own, but to me if 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 I'm with somebody where I feel like I got to go through your phone based on what I've been through in life, I just won't even be with you. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I've had sometimes it crossed my mind. Oh, should I? Or, or not even should I, but it's like, yo, I wonder what they're doing. And the way I live life now is like, you know what, this person, whether they doing me bad or not, like, I'm going to let God show me that when the time is right. He's always going to shine light into the dark places. You know what I mean? And until then, I'm going to just do what I do and, and live it to my best. And when it don't work, Shit, I don't stress it, man. I just keep it moving. That's the only way. Because if you always living on that edge like that, man, you always thinking that in the back of your head and you always trying to find something, man, you're going to be living your life miserable as hell. And you won't even be able to enjoy the life, man. You blocking your yeah. blessings, honestly. Yeah. I went looking for something in like 2008, 2009, I think, whatever. And and I knew what I needed to look for and I found it, right? I already knew. Um, yeah. It was more validation for, for, sure. for some court shit. As far as like a girl wanted to look at my phone, go ahead. I don't know if I would take offense by it necessarily now because I'm there's nothing to find, right? I now you got the people you gotta worry about someone trying to send a fucking cash app. So it's like, oh I need to text your phone, I need to I need to text somebody for whatever. And then do you've seen that scam? There's people yeah, at the gas yeah, station be like, hey, shit. I got lost and I need to call something, blah, blah, whatever. Can I use your phone to call? And then they go to the, someone's cash app, which is whatever, and some people don't have the pin code on their cash app or Venmo, or whatever, and send themselves money. It's just fucking stupid. But as far as going, like, I don't want to go to your fucking phone. For what? I don't want to see I shit. I can't do it, man. I, I'm just saying, like, I don't want to see yours. Like, 
if you know but like you're right if we got to get to that point then you know it's it's, it's like the it's energy that i'm gonna spend doing that i'd rather just spend the energy being happy with you living life and enjoying shit with you and if, if it ain't what it is you know and i feel like as we get older through experience you know what i mean like like a lot of like i've been asked like a close friend of mine she asked me one time like you know because uh, you know you you're, you're known and people look at you as like you're like rich and stuff like that like how are you able to like meet girls and how do you know they're not with you because of money or things like that and i'm just like you know through experience when you talk to people you feel them out you know what i mean like you kind of know what it is where it's going when you first meet somebody so but me, you like, should, let me stop you bro you should be with a girl who fucks you because you're successful because you work hard you grinding and a girl should be able to wash her ass, get her nail, you know, I'm getting to look right and be presentable outside and certain shit. It's like, look, I seen some shit. I forgot what it was. I don't think it was Donald Trump. I forgot who the fuck it was. And so it was like some fucking rich, powerful dude. And the girl was like, you think that, you know, are you with that guy for his money? It was like, he's like, shit, do you think he's with me because I'm ugly? He knows I look good. And I'm just being real, you know, and back to what no, you no, said. No, about I, I respect that. Like, yeah, like it, I'm not saying that, you know, of course that, but it's like basically just somebody that's just all of it for that you know what i mean but it's like like i said it would never even get that far if that's what what it was you know what i mean like it, it's got to be that interest and that 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 shit that bonds you know what i mean to even get to that point but definitely like i believe my girl need to be right you know what i'm saying i want my girl to take care of herself i want my girl to look good because when i seen her she looked good and that's why i want her you know what i mean keep up with yourself because you see me i'm keeping up with myself baby <laughs> yeah yeah on some sports shit bro i got a question man so you know the lakers got they lost they out. You know, there's always the GOAT talk, LeBron, Kobe, fucking uh, Michael Jordan. I think MJ is just, it is what it is. And, you know, um, there's a few people in the conversation. Some people are delusional and whatever. It's the internet some fuck their head up. Um, but, you know, LeBron's son, Bronny, he's a, uh, I'll give him a high number. I, I would put him at, a, if we we're going on an NBA scale of a 1 to 100, um, i give him like a, maybe a 61. And that's a pretty high number. 61 mm -hmm. is not going to get you into the NBA in college, right? I'm saying in his college status, I would think he's maybe a 61 out of 100, right? And you see now he's entering the NBA draft. Now, you know, LeBron is out there and put up the most nepotism thing ever. And he said, whoever signs my son to an NBA team, because his dream is to play with his son. Now, part of me also respects that. Maybe fucked up. Guess what? He busted his ass. I'm never going to say, not say that LeBron's not playing at the fucking highest level he is. And he has been for, you know, what, 20 seasons, um, 20 plus seasons. Me personally, as a Laker fan, I don't give a fuck if LeBron leaves. We can get so much for that motherfucker. Now, the game that he could say, I don't know what he does in the locker room, but he has a lot of knowledge. He has very hard work ethic. You know, um, mm -hmm. we got a great team. I think our coach sucks. And I think that, you know, if the Lakers sign Bronny, then we keep LeBron. And now the only way I'm cool with that is if we get rid of our coach, Darvin Ham, because he's like, there's no goddamn way that, I forgot, I saw the stat the other day. We had to lead for 251 minutes in the four games that we played, right? Or the five games, right? Or the four games. I'm tripping. Five games, whatever. And Denver had it for 100, for 100 and something minutes. I forgot, 140, 150, whatever it was. We had chances to close this out we had a chance to to be done we would have, would have beat the, the 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 you know the returning champs and now on a business aspect how do you feel about the fact that lebron's like look i'll stay with the lakers if the lakers draft them now the thing is we got a high draft in the fucking nba draft this year we got like a number eight pick whatever the fuck it may be now anybody that has a top 10 pick and i know you watch basketball to a little bit i don't know if you you know you a fiend like me or miles or jordan but if you were a GM of an NBA team and LeBron probably got another year, two years max, and his dream is to play in the NBA with his son, that's his dream, which is a, it's a fucking big fuck. It's a, that's a dream. That's a dope ass dream. It's, it's, and he can make it come into fruition. If you were the Lakers GM yeah. or any GM, would you sign LeBron? Would you sign, would you, would you draft Bronny knowing he can't play in the fucking NBA just so you can get LeBron? I feel like if, if I think of it as like a business move, uh, Strictly I think business. financially, it, it it would it would it would it would like call, I think it would be a good move. I think like it'll bring a lot of attention. It'll bring a lot of just all. It'll bring a lot of money in for them. You know what I mean? Will it will it be a good thing? As in on the on like on the floor and on the court, man. I don't, like this is like I always tell Vanna, you know, because she plays basketball, bro. It's like you know, I tell her, look at LeBron. 
He's he's cold. He's he's probably the best right now. And if you ain't got the right team and you ain't got the right coach, mainly, bro, it ain't gonna work, man. No matter how good you are, because the game can't be just dependent on you. You know what I'm saying? I'll say this: if Golden State drafts him, their dynasty is on a decline. But Steph and LeBron and the, t- the people they got on there now, bro, they fuck around and win a chip. I think it's a great business That'd move. That'd be scary, definitely. And I don't think yeah. that there's only a handful of teams that can pick a LeBron and guarantee, you know, put themselves in, into a real situation. Can they afford them? But, but the Warriors can. So, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Um, to wrap things up, is there anything else? Like, you- Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think, like, if any team is going to try to get him out of the Laker contract and Bronny, that's going to cost him a lot of bread. You know what I mean? Oh, it is. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before I, before I wrap things up? No, that's pretty much it, man. You know what I mean? It's just so, mainly like, hey, like, y'all make sure, man, like, as much as y'all here grinding, y'all getting to it, man, make sure y'all keep that peace, man. That peace is what's going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, know you, that, man. You know where you're going to find that peace? On the motherfucking golf course. And I'm going to say this. It'll also drive you absolutely <laughs> crazy. It drives people to drinking. It drives people to divorce. It drives people to breaking the clubs on the fucking course. And, but it's therapeutic for me. Um, speaking when, of golf. When is, the, um, when is the tournament again, bro? My tournament's on Monday, May 6th, day after Cinco de Mayo. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, uh, if you're watching this show right now, it'll be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's three days, out, three days away, man. Three days away, I'm, it I was mean, sold I'm, out. I might, even, I, I might even come fuck with you, bro. I might just come, come out there up. and kick it. Just really give witness you, it and see it. I'll give you a credential. The beautiful the fucking Trump course is gorgeous. All 18 holes have an ocean view. It's going to be a decent day. Um, it ain't going to be the best sunniest day, but it's going to be let, a great uh, day Let me for be golf. your golf cart driver. I got you. I'll put you in there. Um, you know, it's it. There, there's a lot at stake. You know, we got fucking four championship rings that I made. You know, we got it. We giving away a motherfucking fire, Bentley. Fire. Goddamn, 2024 Bentley Bentega for a hole in one contest. We got surprises and gifts, gift bags. Live Golf is sponsored. Can I enter that contest? Can I enter that contest? Motherfucker, you or ain't I gotta play the whole game. I would let you fucking hit seven, 75 balls. You ain't fucking hitting that motherfucker in that bitch. Bro, don't doubt me. I would, dog, I'll don't doubt, doubt you, bro. Me. I'll tell you this right now, dog. It ain't gonna happen. Man. But you know what? Uh, yeah, shout Y'all out to everybody. Y'all wanna see me try this? <laughs> I, want, I want Jimmy to try to hit a 175-yard fucking hole in one. Is, but the chances, just so you know, for you would probably be one in a million. But hey, you, you're a lucky dude. It could happen. Um, <laughs> guys, speaking of golf, uh, I appreciate everybody that's listening to this that is gonna be attending the WLI. Um, there are no spectators. I might have two or three people from my company and uh, maybe Jimmy pops up and it's going to be an amazing event. It is a blessing. It is my second annual WLI Watch Lord event. It's my third golf tournament. And, uh, you know, we got one in Oceanside coming up in October. Um, next year, we push it for San Francisco, possibly London, possibly Korea. Um, yesterday, I was able to uh, play in the 17th annual George Lopez Celebrity Golf Tournament for um, Kidney Health and his foundation. Um, George is a dear friend. He's introduced me to the game of golf. He is a fucking amazing person. He just told me that he's going to put me in the next season of Lopez versus Lopez. He has a hit show on NBC. And I won't tell you what he has me doing. It's crazy. Fire, but, fire. you know, every year I get paired up with Joe Pesci, probably one of the most legendary actors ever of our time and any time. Mm-hmm. Um, an icon, Smokey Robinson. There's only one Smokey Robinson. You're talking about literally another absolute legend, true, actual legend. icon. Smokey, oh my God, can you tears of a clown cruising? Just, you know, um, just so many things. And Smokey, and, 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 and Smokey's what, 84, 85? Joe Pesci's 82, 83. Like, you know, these are these dudes are old and they out there still golfing. It's amazing, right? Um, yesterday, uh, we had a new guy in our foursome, uh, Tommy Thayer. He is in a member of one of the most legendary rock bands ever, Kiss. And if you don't know who Kiss is, man, I mean, they got a massive fan base. And, you know, these dudes are older. And, and Tommy For Thayer, real. thank you, bro. You were, you were an amazing, amazing dude. Um, shout out to D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, uh, Tim Allen, Joe Montaigne, Andy Garcia. Uh, it's always a huge, huge event. A lot of celebrities. That's eventually where I would love for this tournament to end up and raise a lot of uh, you know awareness to you know for him. It's kidney. You know, for me, it would be for the kids. And it's a, it was just an amazing fucking time. By the way, 
Joe Pesci. I'm on a par three. It's 143 on the laser. Playing 165. I take out my six iron and I'm waiting for 10 minutes because we're at this, this one area. It's kind of like a turn. We're at Lakeside Golf Club, right? Country Club. And I don't ever let anybody switch club. You know, I, I have my club all the time. So I had it laid against my cart. I come back. I striped this bitch. Oh, of course you did. No, I fucking did. And it went 10 yards past the green. I shot over the green. I was like, it's no motherfucking way in a million years. Unless it was, but there, I was playing in the wind. So I knew it was playing at least 15, 20 yards. So I said, what the fuck? I looked down at my club. Joe Pesci switched my club. He gave me a five iron instead of a six iron. So I hit it fucking far. I was like, motherfucker. He took off in the cart. I walked over to him and said, hey man, when the fuck do you get a green titleist ball? You've been playing a white ball all day. What the fuck is going on? He's like, man, shut the fuck up. And I was like, he stole the ball. He, this motherfucker <laughs> stole three balls from me. We got a video. We're going to post a video of it, man. The motherfucker stole three balls from me. He started hitting me with his club. And by the way, I don't think a lot of people really know because you've seen him in Home Alone and everything else. I don't know if you know, Jimmy. Joe Pesci really connected to the mob, bro. You know what I'm saying? Joe's a real gangster. Like, people don't, you don't do some research on Joe. He, he real, that good fellas in casino shit. He, shit. he showed, he showed, played that role right. Yeah. So he gotta be, you know what I mean? You watch casino and he wasn't acting, bro. That motherfucker was, yeah, you know. Yeah, good fellas, bro. He yeah. don't play. All that shit. So anyways, guys, I'll see you yeah. on Monday. Uh, and if not, then I will see you on the next episode as cold of cold as ice. Jimmy, I love you, bro. Thank you, man. And then, uh, love you too, bro. We out, y'all. That we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice. We took a chance to